everyone. I'm Nicole, this is Puppy Finn, and we're here to do a nice little day four yoga practice. This class can be done anytime, but if you're following the series, that's super lovely. We're just gonna do a nice chill class today. Today's word that we're learning about is santosha, which is contentment. So I'd like you to arrive in a nice seated position. We're just gonna float the cheeks back and find a nice upright spine. So just for a couple of moments, let's come into our breath and see how we're feeling today. I really appreciate you coming. Thank you for sharing your time and energy. And we're gonna have a really nice, beautiful class where we learn all about finding our contentment. So let's inhale and exhale, long, smooth breaths. Perhaps you close the eyes and just do a visual scan of the body from the inside out. Notice how you feel right now. And see if you're feeling anything other than content. And as we find the breath and start to deepen and soften our breathing, we start to become more aware of our internal world and we let the external world go. We find those five senses and we just let them fall away. So just focusing on the breath. And the most interesting thing about our response to stress is that Often we fight or flight in our nervous system, but the one thing that we forget about is freeze. Another thing we do during stress is freeze. And guess what happens to our breath? It freezes as well. So let's just keep the breath long and smooth. Do you feel a little sway? If you don't, that's okay. See if you can visualize being like a tree and there's just a gentle, gentle breeze. And while your breath is getting long and smooth and soft, we just simply allow for our body to move around whichever way it wishes. This is our contentment class. The interesting thing about santosha or contentment is that we don't actually have to try to get it. It's our birthright. We're born with it. But what happens is we, we harden ourselves with different habits and different activity and we block the flow of our own joy and contentment. So finding a nice, long, smooth breath here. The best thing we can do right now is be curious about the dream. Right now, puppy Finn is having a dream. Can we daydream? It's said that our greatest gift of daydreaming has been lost. So spend this time now, I'm inviting you, I'm asking you, urging you to daydream. If you could do anything you wanted today or on your next day off, what would it be? And I mean anything. While we're sitting like this, we might ponder a book that we'd like to read. We might ponder a book we'd like to write. We might be in the middle of a project. We might be starting something new. Or maybe we're already finishing up something. Daydream. Give me 
you a moment now to change your seating position if you feel for it, just to come into bound angle, Baddha Konasana. So we're going to bring the feet together. So stay in easy pose or switch to your feet together and sway. Hands can be on the ankles, they can be on the knees, they can be on the feet, and you sway. Try not to force it and be like, why am I going that way? Just see. Just see where you go. Have fun. Find your birthright. Find the flow, the bliss, the joy, the contentment. Here's something fun to ponder. They say that we take on the emotional struggles of our parents. So you just pause for a moment and you say, well, what was my mom's biggest emotional challenge in her life? And it could be whatever. Let's just pick a word. Let's say it's, um, I don't know. Let's say it's anxiety um, or really nervous tension or something. And then let's pick our dad or who our paternal birth parent was like. Could be a grandfather, could be father's son, could be an uncle, it could be no one, and that's okay too. But just pondering, you know, if there's absence of father or mother, just what that emotionally causes for us. So just for a moment, you say, okay, mom, whatever, dad, whatever, and then you say, did I pick up that emotional challenge? <laughs> My instant answer is, oh yeah, I did. <laughs> and since I've been about 25, I've been really struggling with it. So I want you to breathe. Today's class is about contentment. We're going to purify the five elements. Today is basically just a meditation, which is just as important in yoga as our very vigorous asana or postures practice. In fact, the reason why we learn to sit and meditate for so long is so that we can literally sit still rather than doing a vigorous anything. Good, so wherever you are, bring your knees back together. Let's just do one seated posture where we do a spinal twist. Let's send the legs out long. Which way should we go? So again, if you have a preferred spinal twist at this moment, you do it. Otherwise, we're just gonna do this nice little movement now where we bring our right knee up towards our chest and we're just gonna hug that left knee. Hug that le uh, left arm around our right knee. So nice tall spine here. This might be your twist. This might be it. Just sitting up nice and tall. Wow, I just saw a beautiful hawk fly into the tree. I saw its beautiful tail that looked like a zebra. With those lines. Or a tiger, like our fin bot. One more breath. If you want to go into full twist, take your right arm and float it behind you. And you might not even put your fingers down. You might just see how that feels. And see if your gaze can follow behind you to that right shoulder. Good. And just enjoy your twist. Enjoy your breathing. Next breath, mindfully release. Come back to center. And then exhale and bring that right leg down. Good. A little shake. And then let's do the other side. Left knee comes in and up. Good. See how you feel here. Take your right arm around the left knee and give that a little hug. You're instantly going to go into a mini twist here. So you can just hug and stay straight or go around to this side. Good. One more breath here. Again, try not to just collapse into that back hand. 
Maybe you're gently looking over your left shoulder. And then we're going to come back to center in a breath. Inhale. And then exhale, that left leg down. Good. Give your legs a shake. Give your legs a shake. Your space legs. <laughs> and then we're going to think about rolling down to the mat. So one tiny little core exercise today. We'll just do our boat pose. So you can just stay here. You can float your hands under your knees and bring your calves up. And maybe you even just clasp your hands and hold. And again, try not to totally slouch through the back. Get a nice tall spine. Get your legs out in front and your smile and your face is soft. Second variation for Navasana boat is just to release your arms. Of course, your powerhouse, your core is going to shake and fire up a little bit here. Let's hold for last breath. Good. And then lower your feet down. We're going to lower to the mat. Take your time. See if you can articulate your spine onto the floor so it really gets that nice massage. And then we'll extend the legs out long in front. Good. A nice thing to do here is give yourself a hug. So we're going to take the arms shoulder height beside us. We're going to find a nice, long, smooth, conscious breath for this practice no matter what else we're doing. The only thing you're thinking about is a big breath, a deeper breath. You say that the average breath we take less than 10% of our lung capacities. Air or our potential and when we take a mindful breath that's say seven counts long we start to actually change our hormonal system. So there have been many yoga books written just about breathing. So inhale and see if you can make the count, seven counts. At the same time, you lift up the arms and we're gonna cross the arms over and give ourselves a nice, big, wonderful, kind, lovely hug. Notice if your exhale shortened and see if we can keep that seven counts for inhale and exhale. Good. Next breath, the arms are going to come open. Seven counts. Exhale, the other arm comes on top and you give yourself a hug. Get a long, smooth exhale. Now stay here for one breath, seven counts in and out, and tell yourself at least one compliment, at least one nice thing that you really like about yourself. You can give yourself a little squeeze. Thank you. I love me. I love me. When was the last time you stood in the mirror, said, I love me, said, I am enough. That's a really good one. Marissa Peer, beautiful work to undo some of the mind stuff that we have going on. So the rest of the class is just a very gentle, simple meditation. If you've had enough today, that's great. If you want to listen along, we're going to purify our five elements. So finding that nice smooth breath, coming into the theme with the sound that's with us right now, the sound of water, we will purify the water element. So this is just a simple thing where you imagine that the next glass of water you drink will be purifying to your body, where the next time you shower or bathe, you will visualize that the water is washing you and that you're releasing loving, happy water back into the water table, into the water cycle. Because your body is mostly water, let's visualize or imagine now the happy water crystals within us. 
can think of Masur Imoto, who showed that when he wrote kind words on water samples, they would crystallize into snowflake patterns. Thank you, I love you. I'm sorry, please forgive me. All kinds of beautiful things. Those are the most four important statements in the Hawaiian system, ho'oponopono. So washing over our water, thank you, I love you, thank you, I love you. Then we go into earth element. Your body is made of the earth element. The particles of dirt and sand and mud and blood and tissues and bones and it all turns to dust once your soul has left the physical body. Or, of course, any other technique that we use. You know there's even something called aquamation. It's an aqua, aquatic cremation. And it's much better for the environment than <clears throat> uh, traditional cremation, which actually is a very bad environmental toxin. Sorry, I didn't mean to go there, but water, 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 earth element now, earth, earth, earth. The best way to purify earth element is doing what you're doing. Coming to a yoga class, if you can, every day for 30 days. Playing with the body, honoring the body. So, playing percussive instruments, banging on things, gardening, cooking, all kinds of it. Earth element, get out there, do something. Don't just be on the couch your whole life or by the pool. That's okay to be by the pool, but don't just be by the pool your whole life. <laughs> all right, third, and maybe, you know what? If you're by the pool your whole life, no worries. Actually, I don't mind that either. I just don't want to be a couch potato that's lying by the pool. I guess you get it. Next element we're going to clear is our air element. So we inhale and we imagine fresh air coming into the body. We exhale, we release, we let go of any issues. And air is so pliable and movable. <clears throat> Excuse me, we can release and let go easily by purifying our air element. The next element to purify is fire element. Imagining that we're in the olden days and we used to cook and heat with a live fire that we could see every day. It's said that our aura is cleared by fire. So even lighting a candle or a match or a small beautiful bonfire every day can be extremely healing to your fire element. And the immortal yogis in India would meditate that they were in a live fire. And there's a story of one yogi who meditated he was in fire for 90 years. Beautiful. It helps to break the death habit. Focusing on your five elements. So light a candle now or later. And just gently gaze at the flame for one minute to purify your aura. Every day you can do this exercise. And then the last element is the spirit element. Find your spirit. Imagine the sun is shining on you, warming you, like the sun has turned to liquid. And the moon is shining down, and it's shining her wisdom. And you get this beautiful, delicate balancing of masculine and feminine coming from the sun, coming from the moon, coming from the earth. And you find your spirit in this beautiful, bathed light where we perhaps open our root chakra and our crown chakra and we go out our physical body and we go plug into the earth and we go plug into the sun with an imaginary electrical magnetic aura conducting cord, transcendental glitter. And we ask for our spirit to be renewed and purified don't just follow one religion. 
follow all of them or ones that promote your full spiritual values. If something doesn't feel right or it feels unkind or bad, it probably is. So how to see the good in everything. Candace Pert. One more breath. Now use your imagination to sense, feel, or perceive your body in a beautiful electromagnetic field, and you have purified earth, air, fire, water, and spirit element, and you are perfectly glowing in your aura right now. You're full of radiance. You're full of charisma, and you're full of life force and joy. Thank you for coming. I hope you have a wonderful day. Whenever you do this beautiful practice, the intention is to come back to your contentment. Not extreme joy or extreme anything. Just a beautiful flow of contentment. And you can dip in and out, but you know what your baseline is, your home frequency is a gentle, loving santosha. Let's bring the hands to the heart. We dedicate the merits of this, of this practice to all sentient beings. May all beings be relieved of their suffering and may we dwell together with great fruitfulness and harmony. The light in me greatly honors and sees the light in you. Namaste.